learn.ba. In the last video, I talked about how regardless of whether you want to be a business process analyst or a business systems analyst uh, when you're starting off in your career, regardless of which types of business analysts you want to be, the core skill that all business analysts have to acquire first is the ability to produce business requirements and specifications. So I talked about uh, that in, uh, at length in the last video. In this video, I want to talk a little bit more about uh, the difference between business requirements and specifications. This is an area where uh, a lot of new business analysts um, have a lot of difficulty because the challenge there is that there is no standard for what is a business requirement versus what is a specification. And so for new business analysts, uh, they're, I see that they're constantly always seeking an answer to that question. How do I know what to put in my BRD versus what I should put in my functional specification or my SRS document? And the answer really to that is that there is no standard and it is unique to every situation. It is unique to the company that you work for and at times it's even different depending on the project that you're working on at the same company. But what I'm going to do in this video is I want to give you some guidance on how you can learn to make that judgment call on your own. So on a project by project basis, uh, you as a business analyst have to be able to make a judgment call on what you should put in your business requirements document versus what you should put in your uh, in your uh, functional specification or your software requirement specification document. And excuse me for a second here. Uh, so you should learn how to make that judgment call. And that is one of the hallmarks of what a uh, an experienced business analyst does because uh, as you become more experienced as a business analyst, you start uh, you stop relying on things like templates uh, and on things like standards that might come from the IIBA or they might come from uh, the PMI. You, you stop relying on those standards because you see how things actually work inside the company that you're working for. And a big part of you being able to be effective in that environment is, is that you have to learn how to make the judgment call on a case by case basis. So here's uh, a little bit of advice on how to do that. Number one, when you're trying to figure out whether something is a requirement or whether it's a specification, you have to always consider the level of detail that you're dealing with. And there are three different levels of detail at which you can document requirements and specifications. The first level is what I like to call the client level, uh, or you can call it the customer level, depending on your company. But the client and customer level is the level of detail, it's the broadest level of detail. Uh, and it's the primary audience for that is your customer or your client. So if you're working inside a company, the person on the business side of the company who's uh, funding the project is the client or they're the customer. That person normally is a senior level person, director, VP level, president. Uh, that person is responsible for making sure that the resources are available for your group to be able to produce the solution that you need to produce. So they're the client. At their level of detail, you're talking very broadly about uh, BRD, bullet point level of what it is that the, the project is going to produce. And so your BRDs uh, could be a simple couple page document that basically outlines at a very high level what it is that the project's gonna deliver. That all goes into your BRD document. The second level of detail is what I like to call the user or the operational level. So the client who's funding the project is not gonna be in your requirements meetings in most cases. What they're gonna do is they're gonna tell you who the right people are within their organization who uh, deals with the uh, issues on a day-to-day -day basis. And that person typically is the user of the system that you're putting into place. And they're the person that works at the operational level to make sure that the, that, that the client's area of business functions properly. And so the user level detail, you can split that depending on the situation into BRD or into specifications because the uh, at the operational level depending on the situation of course 
uh, you can have users uh, or operational folks who understand system logic in a very clear way. And so what you can do is that you can include that into the BRD because the BRD is really the contract between uh, the business side and the IT side. You include that into the BRD and you don't ask the client necessarily to read it all, but you have to get them to rely on their operational folks to validate that what's written in the BRD is right. So that's the second level of detail. So we've covered the client level detail, we've covered the user level detail. And both of these uh, different groups, uh, these different audiences for your BRDs and your specs are on the business side. The third level of detail is what I like to call the builder level or the developer or the IT level. This is the level of detail that you need in your requirement specifications uh, at a grueling and excruciating level of detail that uh, a developer needs to be able to make sure that they can write the code to satisfy the requirement. And so that level of detail is almost always a, uh, a, a functional specification level detail. There is very rarely a situation where you would put that level of detail in a BRD. And the rare instances would be is that one, you have a lot less time than you need to actually produce requirements and specifications so you don't make the difference between them and you produce one single set of documents that contains both requirements and specs. That's the first instance that you would do that in. Second instance that you would do that in is if you're ever in a situation where the uh, business folks are so savvy or they are so adamant at wanting to know the details that they want the details uh, as something that they want to sign off on. And so that's the second situation where you would actually include that uh, uh, builder level detail, the developer level detail in your BRD documents for your business customers to sign off on. In many cases and in many organizations, the, the company that you work for, especially if it's a larger organization that has a, a very methodical way of implementing projects, in those instances, there's going to be a, a different set of documents that's produced for business requirements or BRDs and a different set of documents that are produced for the functional specifications or the software specifications, which, uh, which is uh, all of the details of uh, how the business requirements are, are actually supposed to work. Now, those, that's the, f so considering the level of detail and looking at those three different levels of detail is the first uh, thing that you start considering when you're trying to decide, is this, a BRD or is this a functional specification? So I'm writing a use case. I'm gonna, am I gonna put that use case in my business requirements document or am I gonna put that use case in my functional specification document, right? Consider the level of detail at those three different levels. Who is your audience and who's signing off on which document? The second piece of advice I would give, the second consideration I would give there is that you uh, depending on the situation that you're in, what you should do is you should always consult the people who have the best chance of knowing. And those people are usually the manager that you report to or the project manager that has been assigned to your project. And if there is no project manager, try to find a project manager who has experience. If you're working in a company where there is no project management discipline, what uh, you have to do is you have to find the best person who would know the answer to that question and you uh, have to approach them and say, hey, can you give me a little bit of advice on how uh, I should structure my documents and who I should ask for what kind of sign off on. And what you'll get in most cases is that people will tell you about their previous experiences, especially if, if it's somebody that has had a lot of history doing the type of work that you're doing. They will uh, tell you about the history of what they've done and um, how things have gone uh, based on the different ways that they've done them. And that is uh, a, a really, really good starting point because th what that helps you do is it helps you to learn what the norms are, what the cultural norms and uh, what the unwritten procedures in your company are, right? When it comes to dealing with, uh, when it comes to dealing with uh, dividing up requirements into business requirements versus specifications, right? And like I said, this may change on a project to project basis because you might have one project that's, one for, that's for one line of business 
And then let's say, for example, you have a, a project that is for the finance department in your company. Your next project might be for the accounts, uh, not accounts payable, let's say might be for the warehousing uh, unit inside your company. Those two are two completely different areas of, uh, of your business. You're gonna have very different clients and they're gonna have very different expectations of what their business requirements documents look like, if they have any expectations at all. And so on a project by project basis, especially if you're working at a much larger company, you're gonna, you're gonna have to probably structure your documents, your business requirements documents and your functional specifications very, very differently depending on what project you work on inside the same company. So for a business analyst to be able to survive and to be able to thrive in that type of an environment, you can't rely on any external uh, advice. Well, I don't wanna say advice, but you can't rely on any uh, external standards to dictate to you about what is a BRD versus what is a functional specification. You have to learn to be able to uh, make that judgment call on your own on a case-by-case -case basis. Now, when you're first starting off, it's very, very difficult to, to do that because you don't have any of the experience and you don't have any of the background in the company. But over time, your goal should be to be able to look at a situation or hear about a project and immediately start thinking to yourself, how am I gonna structure my documents based on what I know about that client? What's the most uh, likely version of a business requirements document that they're likely gonna wanna see? And so you start thinking about that in advance as you become a little bit more experienced. So that's what your goal should be. But for the eternal uh, debate out there between what is a business requirement versus what is a uh, functional specification or what is a software requirement specification, uh, that is the answer. The answer is, is that there is no standard and no amount of philosophical debate is gonna solve that problem and uh, no amount of philosophical debate about that issue is gonna help you to uh, come to any meaningful conclusions. The answer is, is that you have to learn how to make your own judgment calls based on the level of detail and based on the norms uh, of the organization or the client that you're trying to uh, satisfy with, the, uh, with what you, it is that you're producing. So uh, that's what I wanted to get across in this video. If you are interested in learning more about uh, issues related to business analysis, head over to the website at learn.ba and start reading some of the articles that I have uh, published on there about the different um, uh, subjects related to business analysis. Uh, one of the articles that I've written there is related to, uh, it's very specifically related to how much technical input you should have when you're uh, producing your requirements and specifications, right? It talks uh, a lot about the different approaches that different people take. It says there's one approach where you don't consult IT or the developers at all until you've produced your document, you've gotten it signed off and you just kind of throw it over the fence. There is, uh, that's not a good approach by the way. The approach that you want to take is that you constantly want to be validating your requirements with the technical team to make sure that you can consider their implement implementability uh, as you're producing the requirements. And um, there's a lot of benefits to doing things that way. And I talk a lot more about that uh, in the article, which is, I believe it's called developer input or technical input into requirements, something along those lines. I'll put a link in the description uh, but uh, go and read that article specifically. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments section and I'll try to address your questions either in the comments section or if it's, if it's a big enough topic, I'll make another video about it.